Welcome to uh, the course on workplace learning. Uh, you are now in module one, and I am uh, the infamous TAMUC Dr. Dog. And we will be in this these lectures looking at needs assessment. In module one, I will provide you an introduction to needs assessment. And you may be asking yourself, what is needs assessment anyway? Well, I am here to help you. Uh, in this particular lecture, we will provide insight into the following. We will look at the importance of needs assessment, steps in conducting a needs assessment, uh, some brief strategies for convincing a client to support needs assessment, uh, strategies for setting up expectations and encouraging participation, determining who and what will be assessed, and we will look at some of the issues that you will need to overcome to have a successful needs assessment. First, we will go to this question, what is needs assessment? A needs assessment is a process, a process which is systematic for determining and addressing needs or gaps between current conditions and desired conditions. Now, you will notice that desired conditions are called wants. Later, we will look at a difference between a want and a need, and we will build upon that as we go through these, these lectures. There is a discrepancy between the current condition and the wanted condition, and this discrepancy must be measured if we are to appropriately identify the need. And the need can be, to, uh, be a desire to improve a current performance or to correct a perceived deficiency. A needs assessment is part of a planning process, and it's often used for improvement in individuals, education, training, organization, or communities. Now, let's talk about needs assessment just a minute. Needs assessment can be used to refine and improve a product, such as training or, or services a client receives. Needs assessment can be a very effective tool to clarify problems and identify appropriate interventions or solutions. By identifying a problem correctly and, and knowing what resources we have, we can direct those resources towards developing and implementing a feasible and applicable solution. Gathering appropriate and sufficient data always informs the process of developing an effective product that will address the group needs and wants. What are, when are needs assessments effective, you may ask? Well, needs assessments are only effective when they are in focus, and they provide concrete evidence that can be used to determine which of the possible means to the ends are most effective and efficient for achieving the desired results. Now, let's go through the goals that we set for the course. The first of these was to examine the importance of needs assessment. Needs assessment is important for the following reasons. Needs assessment. Uh, often aims to tie the performance deficiency to the business need, involve appropriate parties in solving the deficiency, fix the deficiency, or suggest other remediation, determine the best method to get results, and determine when the training will occur. So we have five, five aims of needs assessment which are listed here. Needs assessment, of course, is flexible. Not all actions are required by every type of needs assessment. There are some terms that you should know when we begin to talk needs assessment, and these terms are very important. The first of these we mentioned earlier, and that's needs versus wants analysis. Uh, this, is a, this is a means of, of determining uh, the difference between what we need versus what we want. Wants determine needs. And we're going to spend more time on this later in, in the series of lectures. A feasibility anal analysis determines if an action is feasible. A target population analysis lets you learn as much as possible about those involved in the deficiency. For those of you with a statistical background, you will catch the word population. Population usually refers to a group of interest. Performance analysis is utilized to identify skill deficiencies. Uh, standard operating procedures or SOPs or job performance standards. Task analysis identifies the best way to perform something. Contextual analysis answers logistical questions. 
uh, as to as to those which may arise in the process of developing a uh, deficiency plan. Uh, I want to look at the steps in conducting a needs assessment, and these steps are very broad. We will get much more into this as, as the course progresses, but a needs assessment is a three-step process. First, you gather information. Now, valid information is the foundation for effective decision making. I want you to note the word information versus data. Uh, the, the, phrase, the term data is a plural term, so the data uh, are relevant to the, to the issue at hand, but information does some to, to take those data and transform it into something which can be understood. And that really leads to the next step, and that is analyzing the information you receive. Analysis requires that the information be interpreted in order to draw appropriate conclusions. And then once you've gathered the information, you've analyzed the information, you create a training plan to address the deficiency. Gather, analyze, and create. Now, sometimes you have to convince a client to support needs assessment. And Trainers are often asked to conduct training without conducting a needs assessment. Now, the client may have this preconceived idea that the training is exactly what is needed. Sometimes they have that idea, but that's not reality. Um, if you run across that, some of these tips may help you to determine if the requested training is the right solution. I point out to you that you should always respect the will of the client. You work for the client. And the client does have the right and privilege to be wrong, and you need to respect that. You may ask the client the five purposes of, of the uh, training, and that is why, who, how, what, and when. By asking these five questions and getting answers to them, you're conducting an informal needs assessment, and you may want to provide examples or testimonials from other clients about the importance of conducting a needs assessment. The needs assessment can be used to best position the training to be effective, which in the long term may save vast amounts of money. Now, you will also need to do some things in setting expectations and encouraging participation. Uh, some of these things I'll lay out here, the key to, to gaining expectations and mutual agreement on the three-step process. And to gain participation from stakeholders, you always identify the benefit for each stakeholder. Gain the client's approval to involve each stakeholder. Always identify each person's role and how he or she can contribute to the assessment process. Agree on a decision-making process along with individual assignments. Have each person commit to attend planned meetings. You will determine who and what will be assessed. Now, just a moment ago, I talked to you about the identification of the roles and responsibilities of stakeholders. The client generally makes the determination of who will be involved in the needs assessment based on the recommendation of the trainer. Now, differing organizations have differing decision-making processes. Uh, some have unions, some want cross-functional training teams. The list is endless. To avoid problems, be sensitive in the organization to who makes decisions and how decisions are made in the organization. Now, the last thing we wanted to look at were some of the issues that are, need to be overcome to deliver a successful needs analysis. Uh, I've laid out here five major problems or barriers which can, uh, can impede the needs assessment process. Before beginning, give some thought on how to handle each of these issues. The first one is confidential information. Information utilized in a needs assessment can either be confidential or shared. It may be anonymous. Um, you have to determine uh, the status of that information. If you take confidential information and you reveal that information outside the circle of those who should know it, then trust is lost. And when trust is lost, the effectiveness of the needs assessment is jeopardized. Uh, you certainly need management buy-in. Management must be involved in the three steps of gathering, analyzing, and creating. Uh, promote the benefit of the needs assessment with all parties. If management is not committed, then you're set up for failure. 
Uh, one of the other issues is that of unwilling employees or participants. Uh, time is generally the issue. They say they have a job to do. They want to get that job done. They don't have time to bother with this. You need to, you need to uh, get support from the top executives. That always helps the issue. A cover letter to a survey from, from the CEO of an organization sometimes carries great weight. You also identify key employees to serve as ambassadors of goodwill and clearly convey the benefits of the training. Uh, cost is another important issue. During the needs assessment, the performance deficiency has yet to be addressed. That means that you're not saving any money until that performance deficiency is addressed. You may want to do a feasibility analysis on the anticipated savings. Hard data work wonders in changing perceptions. And the, the last of these is that of inter interrupting work. Time is money. Keep the process brief, streamlined, and attractive in appearance. Now, how did we do? We laid out six uh, goals that we wanted for these, or six objectives for this module. This lecture provided insight into each of those, the importance of needs assessment. We looked at steps in conducting, uh, convincing a client to support needs assessment, setting expectations and encouraging participation, determining who and what will be assessed, and the issues to overcome. Just in closing, I want to thank you very much for your support. I remind you that your patronage keeps my family fed. In the words of we old Trekkities, the last generation, live long and prosper. That predates the saying, may the force be with you. This is Dr. Dog thanking you very much for your attention to this lecture.